What would you say has been the greatest effect of the Carbon Literacy Project so far? Um, the fact that the Carbon Literacy training has affected people in such a substantial way. There's a moment in people's realisation of the urgency of the climate issue where the penny drops and we've seen that with nearly 30,000 people now and it's not just the penny dropping, it's action. Every piece of carbon literacy training ends with action. Every learner devises the best things that they can do themselves and that's two actions per learner. That's 60,000 actions out there, over 300 courses written, hundreds of organisations involved, and the spread of it as well. So at the, at the micro level, you've got the individual on it, and then you've got the spread of organisations working as a community of practice and helping each other on board. It's almost a multi multiplying effect of each yes. person reach reaches a bigger audience. Absolutely. We work in cascades, and these cascades constantly surprise me. Amazing. Um, are there any particular in industries or organisations you'd like to work with in 2022? Are there any names on your list, so to speak? Um, because of the, the great growth in demand for carbon literacy, we're actually uh, letting that take care of itself to some extent. Okay. But I'm getting more proactive in my role as Director of Advocacy. We're starting a conversation with the agriculture sector. We're starting a conversation with the logistics sector and I'm very hopeful that we're going to see things happening with, with the professional services as well. Um, there's a leading law firm, global law firm, uh, getting on with their carbon literacy. They're going to be sharing what they do. So there, there are some key targets that we're looking at. There are other shareable resources that are going to be coming through uh, around the construction sector and the rail sector as well. So some really big industries. Though. Yeah, and footprints to die for. In a, Absolutely. Sorry, that was a terrible <laughs> phrase. <laughs> can we scrap that? No, no. We can edit that in post. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. No, I mean, in, in terms of big impacts, obviously, but the, even small moves by some of those sectors will have a huge impact. And uh, touching on that, I suppose, going back to um, the industries, um, the multiplier effect even, sorry. Um, if there was one everyday change that people could adopt, um, what would you say would be the most important thing to drive uh, sustainable adoption or the adoption of sustainability? Our actions are focused on the workplace. So it's down to each person to actually home in on the most effective thing they can do. And that will depend on position, the sector uh, and your particular skill set. So uh, one of our earliest learners was a security guard in a next store. Uh, he said, oh, well, all the clothes turn up in these long plastic tubes that get landfilled. That's rubbish, isn't it? So I'm, I'm going to cut up those tubes, tape up one end, and I've got bin bags. Hurrah. Now, in terms of carbon footprint, that's not a huge difference. But there's one employee on the shop floor who's taken a stand and is doing something who has that ownership. At the other end of the scale, there's a chief executive of a huge civil engineering project who literally brought forward their net zero date by five years That's a huge as, step. as a result. So it's very much horses for courses that doesn't answer your question. But, <laughs> so there's but no it, one it, size fits no, all. No, no, there isn't. But, but it, the, the training gets you to a place of realising that this is the best thing I can do. That's fantastic. Um, and I suppose lastly... Um, on a more negative note, are there any sectors you feel that are lagging behind in terms of the adoption of uh, carbon literacy? I think there's an absolute groundswell uh, amongst the leadership of uh, most sectors to realise that things are happening. There are some areas, I was just talking to one representative of a sector um, who was feeling that, yeah, we know we're going to have extra parameters in our procurement, in our tenders, but actually we can cope with this. Um, there, so there are some sectors that don't realise the challenge of the speed and scale of change that science demands in this, and that that means everyone's on board. So there's, there's a, 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 a shift in thinking that's needed from, yeah, we've got an environment specialist who can churn out the numbers for this pitch to thinking, no, actually our whole team have got this and we're all bringing solutions in there. 
So that varies actually less sector to sector than company by company. I see. But when people get on board with it, it's amazing. We have um, the country's largest vehicle recycling company called Synetic. They run 15 vehicle recycling plants uh, across the country. The, 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 the passion with which they've adopted this, they're circular economy, you know, they're, they're, they're brilliant in terms of recycling usable bits of cars. Fantastic, but the, the passion across the workforce with which they've embraced this. One guy says, oh, I, I, yeah, I was a real petrol head <laughs> until I got this. You know, you see these changes happening and it's driven throughout the organisation. So there's, there's so many positives to it. That's amazing. Thank you very much, Phil. You're very welcome.